Our next speaker is Beverly Wolf. She's on the faculty in the computer science uh, department at UMass Amherst. She's also a former White House presidential fellow um, on the topic of, of education, and she's the PI of our education hub. Okay, my name is Beverly Wolf, and I'm working with people. I'm at University of Massachusetts. I'm working with people at Worcester Polytech. That's Yvonne Arroyo and Neil Heffernan and Ryan Baker, who's now at University of Pennsylvania. And we are looking at education. Oh, sorry. What? Okay. Oh, so that's the advanced Okay. And can can you? Yeah. Okay, so I want to talk about the School of Athens. This is a fresco by Raphael. I know you think you're modern and we're looking to the future. This is 1500s, and it's, li it's in the Vatican, and it's showing Plato on the left and Aristotle on the right holding bound copies of their books, and that books was the latest technology, and so that's why they're showing it off. Mm -hmm. And then this is the full picture. <clears throat> so our goal is to create education of that caliber, which is one-on-one, face-to-face, person-to-person, and anything you need is what you get. And that's the only kind of training there was you know, in the early days. So we want to provide millions of school children with access to personal services of a tutor as well informed as Plato or Aristotle. In other words, if you have a student in front of you and you know he has weaknesses here, you put on extra material. If you know that he uh, needs to go further, you put different material. If you know that he's ready for college, you treat him in a certain way. If he's not ready for college, he's ready for trade school, you treat him in a different way. The question is, do we have the data to find that out about each individual student and then treat him in this individual way? And well, the award that we have received is to train researchers and educators in the techniques and tools that personalize education. So we're already doing it, and we want to train more people in it. So this means training in data mining and artificial intelligence, machine learning, and learning sciences. And we're going to be using comp competitions, hackathons, workshops as part of this process. So this is an example of the kind of data we do have. Uh, this is from the Pittsburgh Science of Learning Center. And it's about errors that students make. So in this case, uh, a student at the first time, he had an opportunity to solve these math problems. It's in geometry. He made these many errors, but then his error rate went down. And then some people are not uh, handling the errors. They're still making the same amount of errors. Here they definitely are learning, and this is pentag learning pentagons, learning triangles, learning trapezoids, et cetera, et cetera. So we can calculate for every item that we give to students how many students are making fewer errors as they continue, and that we would consider learning, this we would consider not learning, et cetera. No learning and too many errors. Okay? And this is another kind of a error. This is my data, actually. So we have for every student who's on the left, on the rows, we have the amount of time they spend solving each problem, the problem that exists, how many hints they ask for, um, the problems that they get right, the problems that they get wrong, the, prom the problems that show certain skills. And for in mathematics, where it's easy to do that in physics and some of the other uh, natural sciences, you can detect every skill the child has and calculate it. And then when you go on to the next problem, you decide whether you should give that same skill to that student or give them a different skill. So we're already starting to really personalize this data, and I guess this is 571 rows in a year's time with one system. And we have many systems across the country and across the world, and we're all of us doing this kind of work. So um, we also, we are using as our data, the source of our data, an NSF-funded data shop, and it's called LearnSphere. It hosts tens of millions of data points from hundreds of thousands of students using a variety of online learning systems. So at Carnegie Mellon, they have a database, and you can submit your set of data to them, and they will help you clean it up and help you look for, uh, have systems to manage it. We have log data of student interactions. We have test data. We have field observations. And in fully de-identified form with all identifiers secured, which is absolutely required. I mean, we have that problem for sure. So we are able now to uh, change curricula in real time based on student needs. We're able to provide added material for low achieving students and change the curriculum for high achieving students. The results of working with these systems called intelligent tutors or online systems is that students do learn better and they learn more and they learn faster with these systems. And what we do is model the student, that is there's a picture of the student with all the skills that that particular student knows. We model the domain, so if we're in calculus or geometry or algebra, we know what skills are needed. We personalize the tutoring. <coughs> if some students look at 
graphics and they do much better after they get a graphics problem. We try to make sure they get more graphics problems as opposed to textual problems or multi-choice problems, et cetera. And we assess the learning to memory, which is uh, assessment. Well, it still is that students have to take one exam a year, you know, required in our government. Turns out Great Britain has just given up that kind of yearly assessment, which I thought is a good idea. But in the systems I'm talking about, you assess as you teach. In other words, you don't stop at the end of this year and, and assess everybody. You are assessing all the time, and at any moment that system can say to the teacher, tell them exactly where each student is on every topic. Um, and so what we are doing as part of the NSF Spoke Award is giving research, uh, giving workshops, and we're trying to teach how and when to use the key methods that other people use, the methods are not new. Methods being developed as well as standard data mining strengths and weaknesses for the different applications that you have. So people come to us with this data and we're helping them to use it. And answer educational research questions, which I'll show you. <coughs> Drive intervention and improvement in education. And uh, look for validity and generalizability on how trustworthy the applications are. So we don't have a consensus. Everyone now is still fishing, unfortunately, using many methods and finding out what the answer is. Uh, we are, have three workshops planned, a full day coming up in Philadelphia in June, a ha half a day in China, which is the Artificial Intelligence and Education Conference, and an Education Data Mining Conference. And the kind of research questions we ask are what kinds of questions are worth answering and asking? What do teachers and students want to know? What do researchers in learning science want to know? What are the techniques to answer big questions for big data? And these are the things we're teaching, which Bayesian networks visualization, decision trees, and then some of the, the software here that we have used in the past. And uh, the competitions are, let me explain what that is. It's looking at huge databases and having people compete, sometimes over uh, online, to find the resources for it. So one large database that we have is an NSF-supported longitudinal research where middle school students are tracked for 10 years and we can see how they performed on this math test, I'm sorry, the math online tutoring system, and then how they performed 10 years later in college, or if they went to college. So we put those databases together, and we start, the competition here is to look at the database and see if you can predict who will go to college. And that's a very important item. And it seems like there's a possibility that the behavior of a student on an online system in middle mathematics is predictive of who's going to go to college. So we're going to invite people on Gaggle competition to predict student progress. And we're also planning on datathons, which is a weekend hackathon in which participants are encouraged to enhance existing systems. So we have two big systems, assistments and MathSpring. And students will design improved compa learning companions, or they will develop visualizations of hints for the student, or they will uh, change the sequence of problems or the sequence of hints that are given to the students. Um, and that, so then to summarize, that we're just trying to predict future student events from existing large-scale databases. We're trying to help teachers make sense of the dense online data. Sorry. And, got it. Where are we? and develop adaptive sequences in problems adjusted to a student's recent level. That's it. I think that's the thing. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> So you gave examples a lot from um, either middle school or elementary school. Are you looking at all that uh, data at the college, college level? level. Um, it, turn, it turns out that the people we're working with are really uh, committed to K-12. And right now, um, there are definitely our online courses for colleges, but the MOOCs have taken over tremendously. You know, that's where the MOOCs are hitting. And the MOOCs are not intelligent at this point. They're deaf, dumb, and stupid is what I say. So they are essentially pretty much worksheets of problems or uh, lectures. They're still big on lectures. So the, the community who's doing these MOOCs do, do understand they have to put the intelligences. And that's starting to come in the research community. That's definitely happening. But there's not a lot of good examples yet. Yeah. Thank you for a wonderful presentation on education. After all, that's why we're all here. 
And those of us who have children would definitely like to see something of this caliber be um, brought to fruition. Can you speak a little bit about the artificial intelligence part of these personalized tutor? Mm -hmm. You mentioned the workshop in China. Can you speak a little bit about how these AIs or automatons, so okay. to speak, would be trained to be able to assist the students based on their learning patterns and based on their shortcomings. Right. Okay, so she's asking how is the artificial intelligence used in these systems? And you also mentioned something about at home. So to use this as a parent with children. Let me just quickly say that one of the systems is used almost exclusively for homework. It's called assistments. And it's, it teachers assign it, but the children are doing it at home. So it's definitely a part of the home uh, perspective. Artificial intelligence is used to make a model of the student, as I said, to list all the skills, and a model of the domain, like in geometry, how do you break down the skills and what things come first and second, and same, same with math. And then it's also, artificial intelligence is used for designing the tutoring strategies. You know, This strategy is best for these kind of people. I mean, we find that low-achieving males are different from low-achieving females. We find people with disabilities behave differently when they see these problems compared to Others. So AI helps us distinguish and tease apart these differences so that when we have in front of us a female, low achieving, etc., we know pretty much what to do or how to deal with that person. So AI helps us to model all the components of teaching, so to try to represent one-on-one -on -one and person-to-person -person teaching.